So we already learned about two different linearizations for relations. So one was a row layout and the other was a column layout. In this video, we look at some more options for column layouts. Well, one option we've already learned about, that was this one. We had a curve that went over the relation like that. But there are other options for column layouts. And one option might look like this. And you might wonder whether this still is a column layout. But yes, it is a column layout because we can partition the curve into three subparts. Here we have one partition, another partition. So we end up with three parts or partitions if you want. Part one, two and part three. And then still inside each partition, we first linearize all values of that particular attribute, just not necessarily correlated to the other partitions. So in other words, what is the major difference of correlated versus uncorrelated columns? Let's go back. In correlated columns, you preserve the correlation with the other partitions. So let's also partition this one into three partitions, partition one, two and partition three. Here we go. So in a correlated layout, you have this property that if you linearize those values and you pick any of those, this is value number one. If you start counting with zero, so zero, one, two, let's number it a little bit. So this is zero, one, two. And here we could do the same numbering, zero, one, two, and here's another zero, one, two. In a correlated layout, we have the property that this value one in partition one corresponds to value one in partition two. That is what correlation is about. Those two values correspond to the same tuple actually. And they all have the same local number, so to say. So we have three numbers within each partition and zero corresponds to zero here, and that zero corresponds to zero there, and so forth. That is what correlated columns is about, a correlation among the different partitions. Well, how is that in uncorrelated columns? If you also write down the numbering here, we end up with something like, here's a zero, here's a one, and here's a two. And if you do that for the other columns, that would be zero. That's the first value we linearize in that partition. This is a one, this is a two, and here it's bottom up, zero, one, two. So now if we look at one particular value in one partition, let's say 23, this is linearized first, that is this little id zero, then this should correspond to zero in partition two. Well, it does not correspond to that with respect to the tuples. 23 belongs to a different tuple than Rob. Those are two different tuples. So there's no correlation anymore among those two IDs zero. And therefore, this linearization, at least across partitions one and partition two, is already uncorrelated. Of course, it might be that some values are correlated. They have the same local ID within the partition and belong to the same tuple. But still, as, as, as soon as you find one value in the partition that's not correlated to the other value in another partition, then those two partitions are not correlated, are considered not correlated. So here we have such an effect that this is a tuple that's visited second. Yeah? This is zero, one. And this gets a local ID one. And it has the same local ID one in partition two. So here you still have the correlation for that tuple. However, as already one of the correlations here is broken, those partitions are considered not correlated. And you can do the same across those partitions. Any pair of partitions can be checked for correlation. So why is it important to know about this? Well, Let's look at correlated columns first. If, if you have correlated columns, this is really easy to implement because naturally leads to storing the individual partitions into arrays. So if you start into three arrays, one, two, three, we don't need to keep the key. As we already know, this is stored, so 23 is stored first, so zero, one, two, and so forth. There's no need to explicitly store those numbers. Those numbers are the implicit slots in the array. So if you have an array 
named ID, and then you put in the index. Whatever value you're interested in, be it zero or one or two, you put it here, and then you get that value, or you obtain or you write that value. So for, for implicit keys, using arrays is a good option, and it has other advantages especially for so-called tuple reconstruction joins. Well, we, we all know about joins among different relations or tables. However, in a column layout, you add some more joins. And those joins are between columns, even though those columns belong to the same relation. But obviously, if you have the property that any value here corresponds to the value here, corresponds to that value there, you know that this is a tuple, this is a tuple, and that is a tuple. So it's relatively easy to join the values of different columns in a relation together. We will later on see how this works. So this is done using a so-called sort merge join. Later on, when we look at physical operators, we will learn about that join technique. It's really easy. But the important part here, actually, we don't need the sort part. That is an expensive part in that join operator. We just need the merge part. Say we're interested in that attribute and that attribute. So we traverse the two columns synchronously, and then we can just join the values of the two attributes and put them in a, in a common structure, for example. So bottom line, a major advantage of an implicit key organization of column stores based on arrays is that those tuple reconstruction joins are relatively cheap. Let's look at the second organization. Let's look at the uncorrelated columns again. So what if you decided to keep this one? Well, here you have to preserve the correlation among the different values, which means you need to introduce an artificial key column for each of the attributes you store. So you have to preserve the information that 23 belongs to Albert, belongs to 45,000. That's very important. This is one tuple. That's one tuple. This is one tuple. And this is one tuple. Okay? Yeah, you preserve that information by writing down this additional key. Yeah? And all entries across the three columns that have the same artificial key here, this EK, they belong actually to the same tuple in that relation. This organization has the advantage that you don't have to maintain the order across the different columns. Yeah, so if you use a physical structure like an array of structs with these two values, you don't have to maintain the order across the different structures. So if you go back, if you have an organization like that and you insert anything, assume you insert anything in between Rob and Peter, the entries in the other columns have to be moved as well in all other columns. So even if you have a hundred attributes, so you have to make sure that whenever you move data around, all the other columns have to be adjusted as well. Otherwise you might lose that information that the values belong to the same tuple. So here you don't have to do that. If you add something, on, so assume you are even only adding one value, assume you insert something where you say you don't, um, you only add the ID, maybe you say, okay, I add another tuple, I give it this artificial key three, and I give it an ID that doesn't exist yet, let's assume that's a primary key, let's say 55, but then the insert is in a way that you don't specify name and city code yet. Maybe you didn't specify an integrity constraint enforcing you to set the name and the city code. So you just have null values actually. So in this situation, you wouldn't have to do anything. That's one advantage here of explicit key. However, some disadvantages with explicit keys are that you need extra space to store this artificial key column in order to be able to um, uh, synchronize values across the different columns. So that eats up some space you do not need to reserve that space in implicit keys. But there's another drawback with explicit keys, and that is tuple reconstruction joins. Again, don't forget that those columns belong to the same relation, and maybe eventually you are interested in several attributes of that relation. So you have something like select, and then you have a couple of attributes you're interested in. Let's say it's just 
name and city code, okay? And then comes whatever, blah, 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 blah. But uh, what this boils down to is that you have to join those two columns later on. We will look at different techniques on how to improve that. And in query processing, there are different options then on and how to optimize on that. There's no need to join the columns up front to join all data in those two columns up front. You can improve on that. But whatever you do, it boils down to synchronizing the values to if if you later say you're interested in tuple one, then well you have to get those different values. And so later on when we talk about query processing, we will talk about these joints and how to optimize tuple reconstruction joints. For the moment, those are the two organizations. And of course you can convert one into the other if you want at any time. So if you have an explicit key organization, you simply sort all the columns on this artificial key column EK. Now they have the same order across all columns well, and obviously in this situation, you can get rid of this column across all tuples. Let's do it. And then we end up with implicit keys again. Then the curve looks like that. You could do the same for implicit keys, vice versa. You add artificial keys for those columns and then you can sort the columns in a different order. You could also do that partially for only some of the columns, but that's an advanced topic we will also return to in the lab and in the exercises. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel Jens Did, or you look at our website infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.